Hello everyone, and welcome to this new very bad update. Very bad, because as you can see, the opponents had changed their lineup, and unfortunately, the final score was still zero for them, just like it happened the first time, I believe. Um, the problem here is that, in my opinion, the uh, uh, the match engine was completely wrong. I mean, we were supposed to play on the wings. All right, they had two defensive midfielder, which might have been compensating for the lack of back wingers. But the problem is that we were playing slightly defensive with a good defence against one striker only, this one who's not strong enough to pierce through this kind of defence. He's, he's definitely not. Despite that, he was able to score once and one defender could score once uh, himself as well. So, and, and in terms of overall skills, we were better. We were definitely better. So, I don't really see how this kind of, uh, this kind of score turned out to be the final one I really don't but we'll see and this match has one more meaning we'll have to uh, have a look at it in a second now let's first analyze the the match so 2-0 for the opponents was the, was the final score 42% ball possession for us 58% ball possession for them well they had a thicker midfield they were very defensive uh, at least in terms of uh, uh, line up they were not very defensive in terms of attitude but yep I believe the thicker midfield is what played the trick basically and the th a thicker defense because of course uh, once you well there are you stand very high chances to lose the ball while attacking uh, when you play against a team like this so, 42% uh, for us, 58% for them, 5 shots for us, 14 shots for them. This is something that just does not make any sense. Because we were supposed to keep the ball on the wings, and we were way stronger both on the wings and in the middle of the pitch, except for the fact that we had a thinner midfield. So, there's no reason that I can see uh, for this to happen literally none then uh, four shots on target for us seven shots on target for them at least we had a higher accuracy in terms of shots on target on shots so uh, two set pieces for us five for them which is of course down to the ball possession and three yellow cards for us one for them again Mm, well, we are basically keeping the average, but uh, it does not make any sense to me. Against one striker, you can't do this. Th there's no way one striker can can be such a struggle for such a well-packed defence, in my opinion. But, well, that's uh, the game's decision. So, uh, the... The uh, very important thing I wanted to talk to you about. Now we are six points away from the 14th position and two matches away uh, and two matches to go. So what happens here is that either we win two matches and Eton S lose two or we're done or we're relegated. And this is going to be, of course, uh, a crucial part of the season, even if now the hopes are very low for us to uh, to get back to safety not a massive deal because we've been going on with our plan and we have been improving our team a lot in the past few seasons so we'll get back stronger than ever uh, we'll have a sort of a, a sit back for once but we'll come back way stronger than than we used to be uh, up to the Serie C2 so guys uh, that said uh, no it's not all done we have to look for 
new players, new youngsters. So while this thing loads, let's analyze uh, the situation here. So we have four, we have been scoring 49 goals, so more than D10S. We have been conceding 65 goals, so uh, 11 less than D10S, which means that in case we were able to hit the 36 points and in case D10S uh, were about to lose two matches, then we'd be in the 14th position in their place. Uh, at the same time, we'd have to pay attention to Real Molonio, they have 33 points, that, so they could just pull ahead of us as well, just as D10S could. So we'll see what happens. Uh, at this uh, exact moment in time, we don't, we can't have uh, a lot of hopes to uh, to stay in Serie issue. But again, it's no big deal, really. So let's have a look at our academy. Let's reveal them. So 17 years of age, physical skills are good, right defender, and work rate is very low. So I'm afraid this guy's not for us. Then offensive midfielder, right, 18 years of age, three stars potential, this is a bad combo. And then uh, five points with crossing, five with technique, it's not too low, five points with passing, good pace for a winger, too high marking, and uh, long shots are good for a winger, set pieces are good as well. So yeah, he's 18 though. I'm not quite sure whether he'll be he'll ever be able to reach the the level we need, the skill the skill level we need. So I'm not quite sure to be honest. I'd rather give him a chance, but I'm not sure this is a good idea. Let's have a look at Tumbolata first. So 18 years of age, uh, summon is very low, but yeah, for a striker, it's not extremely important. Finishing skills are low though. Heading skills are good, and they're difficult to train for a striker. And long shots, yeah, are nearly acceptable. But uh, yeah, all in all, I believe this guy cannot really bring anything extremely good to uh, to our team. Uh, Peshir instead could give us something. Let's have a look at how professional he is. Let's first open his own menu and then let's update the training menu so that Peshir will appear. Scout reports and then let's have a look at what he's like. No special professionalism. No. I'm sorry. Not interested. Alright guys, uh, it's a more disappointing day I'm afraid, uh, but what can we do now? We can just wait and see what happens. Let's try and collect as many points as possible from now on and we'll see what happens. So guys, thanks a lot again for watching, uh, thank you for your support again, and see you in the next video, bye.